Welcome to Outlaws and Gunslingers. From the Wild West to the rise of organized crime during the Prohibition, all the way up to today, America has had criminals, gangs, and law enforcement trying to bring them down. Join us as we profile some of the most infamous criminals, gangsters, outlaws, and lawmen in American history. True crime like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your hosts, Bang and Dang. Welcome back to Outlaws and Gunslingers with your Bang and Dang and uh, how... Hell's Angels time once again for us. We're uh, going down under. Oh, mateys. Down under, mateys. The outback, mate. To the outback. Excuse me, mate. You're in my way. <laughs> uh, we're uh, checking out the old Hell's Angels in Australia, where they are uh, legally classified as a criminal organization in the state of Queensland. And there have been attempts to classify them as such in New South Wales as well. And just like their American counterparts, they have been linked with drug trafficking and production, as well as host, as well as a host of violent crimes, including Moida. Makes sense. Uh, this one's not going to be as long as our uh, last two episodes, but they do got some stuff going on in Australia. So, well, just like the last couple of episodes, it's going to be uh, rapid fire crime. <laughs> some different um, motorcycle gangs that we haven't heard of that are. Clearly only in Australia, uh, a lot of them. Uh, but you got the regular ones there as well. They're everywhere. Before we get to that, go check out our YouTube. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple, go check out our YouTube. <laughs> I always do that. If you're listening on YouTube, go check out our Spotify, Apple. Give us a like, subscribe, uh, review, all that good stuff. Comment, share us with your friends, answer that Spotify question. Here we go, rapid fire crime in Australia. Starting out, Hell's Angels expanded to Australia in 1975, initially established in chapters in Melbourne and Sydney, and now have approximately 250 members and 14 chapters in the country. The club's activities in Australia have traditionally included drug trafficking, drug trafficking, prostitution, armed robbery, arms trafficking, fencing stolen goods, and murder for hire. But they have more recently moved into legitimate businesses such as gyms, tattoo parlors, haulage companies, and the security industry. I mean, Look at these guys. Well. Might as well. Didn't hear that in America. They were doing that. They were just like, no, we just do straight up crime, bitches. We got time for lugging, hauling shit around. <laughs> right. Gee. Except for dead bodies. Well, the Popo there in Australia, they allege that the Hells Angels use mainstream industries to launder existing funds and to exploit new income streams using the strategies they developed during a series of gang wars to intimidate business competitors. The old Australian Hells Angels have aligned themselves with the coffin cheaters, immortals, the red devils, Satan soldiers, Vikings, and the prisoners of war. Uh, there's also a prison gang operating inside the HMP Barwin. No, that would be the prisoners of war. Right. While they have been involved in conflicts with the banditos, the Comancheros, uh, the Diablos, the Finks, <laughs> the Nomads, and the Notorious. All right. Now, the first conflict was with the Rebels after the Hells Angels demanded that the Rebels change their colors from red and white, which is the same colors as the Hells Angels. The conflict ended with the Rebels beating a Hells Angels chapter president in his house with a baby's pram. What is that? Four-wheeled carriage for a baby pushed by a person on foot. A pram, huh? It's a stroller. I can see it. Right. In 2006, the Canadian journalists Julian Schur and William Marsden wrote, The Hells Angels remain the most powerful bikey gang in the country, even though they have fewer members than other gangs, such as the Rebels or the Gypsy Joker. Right, ain't that weird? The Hells Angels, baby. And why are Canadian journalists writing this and not the Australians? <laughs> I got nothing else to talk about. I guess. Hockey probably ain't in right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go to the New South Wales, boys. Members of the rival motorcycle gang, the Comancheros, and members of the Hells Angels believed to be involved in a clash on Melbourne to Sydney flight and subsequently, oh, geez. And subsequently at the Sydney airport on the 22nd of March, 2009. We're all on a plane. Damn. The clash resulted in one man, which was a Hells Angels associate, Anthony uh, Zervais, being beaten to death. The Popo estimated as many as 15 men were involved in his violence. Documents released by the NSW police detailed the bra as a result of the Comanchero National President Mick Howie and the Hells Angels National President Derek Wainahu being on the same flight from Melbourne. Oh, Ooh. they can't be on the same flight. Oh, man. 
four suspects arrested as a result of the altercation. Wow. Hmm. As a result of heightening violence, the New South Wales Premier Nathan Rees announced a state police anti-gang squad that would be boosted to 125 members from 50. Damn. Jeez. Uh, the main suspect in this very case is Mick Howie. He was sentenced to jail and then released a few years later. Then he himself shot dead in downtown Sydney, 2018. Damn, bet it had something to do with that brawl. Well, that was years. nine years later, but how many years ago? Well, they already like to... Well, that's crazy. <laughs> On the night of March 29, 2009, Hells Angel member Peter Zervas, the brother of the man killed during the Sydney airport brawl a week earlier, was shot and injured as he left his car outside his home. July 20th, 2011, an NSW judge dismissed a bid by the state's police commissioner to have the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club declared a criminal organization under laws introduced to NSW Parliament in 2009, allowing the court to declare criminal organizations as declared organizations. Okay. Oh, geez. July 8th. So the uh, judge didn't want that, huh? I guess not. July 8th, 2013, Tyrone... Lee Slemnick, age 37, was standing guard outside the home of Hells Angels Sydney chapter president Suvat Saram Sakleoglu <laughs> when he was gunned down as shots were fired from a passing car. No one has been held responsible for his death, and there have been no arrests as a result. Well, I bet now. Following the death of Slemnick, Saram Sakleoglu, the club president, he was charged with the possession of a military-style assault weapon, which was found in the boot of a taxi. A for which for you all. Right, which he was later acquitted of. All right, you can't. It's a taxi. Was he inside that taxi? I would assume so. At that time? Maybe. His lawyer, Omar Juinat, told the court that the police were unable to prove that Sarah Masakalugio <laughs> knew the firearm was even there. Right. The Popo feared that the weapon was to be used for retaliation. It probably was. Following the acquittal for those matters in April 2016, Sarah Masakalugio, he stood trial with two others for abduction, for which he was found not guilty. Oh, good for him. November 2017. They're trying to get this guy. Charged for supply of large commercial quantity of drugs. He was held in custody for 18 months before his trial was derailed by the prosecution, prompting lawyer Omar Juanat to complain that civil liberties are quickly eroding. Damn, 18. Dude, that's bullshit. He's supposed to be a oh, spare feet. Well, it is Australia. A quick, speedy trial. Well, it is Australia. All right. It- Run by uh, Britain rules, right? Right. Well, that's all for New South Wales. Let's move on to Northern Territory. Hells Angels was established in the Northern Territory after patching over the Blancs, which was a Darwin-based bikey gang on uh, a bikey gang. It's a bike gang. on second uh, of April, nineteen ninety-three. The Darwin chapter of the Hells Angels is believed to be involved in drug and gun rackets, trafficking of firearms, and other equipment stolen from army units. Oh, Hells Angels members Nicholas Frank Shanky Cassidy. And James Scott Parnell Knight were convicted of aggravated assault and sentenced to 15 and 20 months, respectively, hmm. in September 2009. Not too bad. Three others were acquitted due to lack of evidence. Right. Hmm. 6 of December 2007, Cassidy knocked unconscious by two brothers, Bob and Warren Mahoney. That, ha- that happened in a pub in Darwin during a fight that resulted uh, from a joke about Cassidy's weight. Mm. Oh. Less than an hour later, Cassidy, Knight, and four other Hells Angels associates returned to the pub, and they attacked the Mahoney Bros, who were hospitalized with facial injuries. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Levi Griffiths was killed after being hit by a ute driven by Hells. Is that a truck? I think a ute is a truck. It's like a lorry. Oh, no. Utility or coop utility vehicle. Utility vehicle. It's a ute, yeah. Um, okay, a utility vehicle for all you non-Australians. Um, yeah, it was driven by Hells Angels members Nicholas Cassidy. What are you doing, Nicholas? Who was intoxicated at the time in Howard Springs, June 4th, 2011. Cassidy attempted to conceal the accident by moving Griffith's body to an area on the Stewart Highway in Koolalinga, several kilometers from the crash site, replacing the windscreen and spraying the vehicle with bleach and insecticide. Oh. Cassidy was arrested after being identified as the owner and driver of the vehicle that hit Griffith's. 21st October 2013, he was convicted of attempting to pervert the course of justice. He was sentenced to two years in prison, November 1st. That was it. Oh, wow. Jeez, then he, what happened to the guy? Did he get killed? Yeah, he was killed. Didn't even get charged for that. Oh, wow. It's oh, crazy. Fuck. Well, shit happens, right? Yes. <laughs> two Angel Associates arrested and charged by the Northern Territory Popo, 14th October, year 2020, with supplying a commercial quantity of a Schedule One dangerous drug 
possession of a Schedule Two dangerous drug, possession of unlicensed firearms, possession of unlicensed ammunition, and the unlicensed weapons, ammo, and drugs were also seized during a series of raids on multiple properties in rural Darwin area. Damn. Getting all that shit. The raids were carried out as part of a national joint operation against the Hells Angels coordinated by National Task Force Morpheus and involving the Australian Federal Popo and the Australian Border Force and others, which resulted in a total of 24 arrests and the seizure of firearms, ammo, cash, drugs, including meth, coke, steroids, and GHB at 28 locations nationwide. Nationwide. Wow. All right. Well... Not much happening in the first two. That's it for Northern Territory. And moving on to Queensland, Queensland, the Brisbane chapter of the Hells Angels, founded 27th of March, 1997. Bruno and Nuno da Silva, two Portuguese immigrant twin brothers and former Brisbane Hells Angels members, were arrested following a police surveillance operation and pled guilty to trafficking meth from June 22nd, from June 2012 to October 2013. Oh. The brothers operated from an East Brisbane locksmith business and passed a percentage of their drug earnings to the Hells Angels at weekly meetings, although they had left the club at the time of their arrest. Why? You can't just leave the club. All right, there's no way. December 2015, Bruno was sentenced to nine years imprisonment, while Nuno was sentenced to seven. Oh, shit. 2012, Peter City Argos and Zelko Mitrovic, they call him Steve, <laughs> both senior Hells Angels members in Sydney, they were granted nomad status and spearheaded a push into the Gold Coast, founding a chapter in the suburb of Burley Heads. The Popo stated in 2015 that the Angels were now the most active club on the Gold Coast after anti-bike laws weakened the rival Bandinos and Finks, a club later patched over to the Mongols. Oh, shit. Wow. Uh, these guys had previously been more prominent in this area, but not anymore. The Angels come in strong with their Harleys, mm-hmm. and these guys got, like, Hondas and stuff. Like, I don't know. That's probably a law that the, you have to have Australian-made stuff, just right. like America has. And what kind of Australian bikes they got? Probably buying uh, Kawasaki's from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> or Vesnas or whatever. Cessna. Vespas? Vespas. Or scooters and, right. from Italy. Right. The Hells Angels... We're one of 26 motorcycle clubs designated as criminal organizations in the state of Queensland under the Vicious Lawless Association Disestablishment Act, which was passed on October 16, 2013, and it went into effect immediately. Pen, the ink wasn't even dried yet. Right. They already had warrants. Right. Uh, moving on to South Australia. First chapter there in South Australia was formed in Adelaide on 1st of October, 1983. Oh, damn, they're, like, older than everybody. Similar to the case in Queensland, the Hells Angels were also declared a criminal organization in the state of South Australia, along with nine other motorcycle clubs under the legislation that came into force August 2015. Under the laws, it is an offense for members of these organizations to gather in groups of three or more in public or wear gang colors and logos. Oh, wow. Five alleged Hells Angels members and press and prospects became the first to be charged under the laws after they arrested in a series of raids across Adelaide on December 31st, 2015. Damn, they didn't even get to celebrate uh, New Year's Eve either. Damn, they were really cracking down. Not even allowed to wear their colors out in public. Popular criminal Vince Faccarelli. He was kicked out of the Hells Angels. He then joined the other clubs, including the Camancheros. How many did he join? <laughs> <laughs> he then joined other clubs, including the Comancheros, and set up his own club. Oh, look at this guy. He left the Comancheros later. <laughs> Him and his son, Giovanni, they were shot at by unknown assailants in 2012. Oh, Vince, he was sent to the Royal Adelaide Hospital, and his son, dead. Oh. He has refused to name any suspects, even though this was not the first time he was targeted. While Vince was in the hospital, he was visited by friends who are Fink's members. Some Fink's members also visited the funeral of Giovanni. Are they trying to imply the Hells Angels did it? That's what I'm getting at here, huh? Or either the Comancheros or... I don't think so. Clearly, Hells Angels are implied on that. Right. Uh, that's it for South Australia. Moving on to the last state. But the one with the most info is Victoria. We're going to go by decades here on this one. 1980 is going to start first. In 80, Melbourne chapter founding members Peter John Hill and Raymond Hammond flew to California to visit Oakland chapter president Kenny Walton in prison. All right. Walton taught them how to manufacture meth or amphetamines. 
In prison? Okay. Paving the way for the drug's introduction into Australia. And in return, the Australians supplied the Oakland chapter with 300 liters of the chemical phenylacetone, enough to produce 50 million worth of amphetamines. Oh. Uh, Hill posted the phenylacetone in three liter pineapple juice tins to his closest U.S. contact, which was Jim, or James Patton Brandes, who they called Sleepy Jim. Oh, Sleepy Jim. Here All right, go. look at this. You won't be sleepy so much after this. That but chemical must not be illegal in Australia if they're getting their hands on that. Right. Hell's Angels run at a farmhouse in Melbourne's northeast near uh, Hurstbridge where they produce amphetamines in 50-pound batches worth $600,000 a piece. That's in the 80s. The drug lab was raided by the Special Operations Group, 10th of March, 1982, and Hill and the three other angels arrested. Eventually, investigators arrested 19 people, seized three kilograms of amphetamines, as well as cash, explosives, handguns, and also a machine gun. Oh, nice. This sparked an internal feud over the gang's operations that led to around 40 violent incidents. Oh, Internally. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, Hill and another member, Roger Biddlestone, cut their ties with the Hells Angels and cooperated with the police, Uh oh, prompting the club to put a contract on their lives. Nine Hells Angels were charged with conspiring to murder Hill and Biddlestone, but Biddlestone refused to testify, and the charges against his former club mates were dropped. I bet. He was subsequently convicted of contempt of court, though. Eh, he's fine. Hill was convicted on drug charges in 87 and jailed alongside a number of others. Uh Uh-oh. During the investigation, codenamed Omega-2, the police tracked club members' movements ferociously, prompting Jim Brandes, the Melbourne Hells Angels American contact, to try and assassinate Barb Armstrong, who was a detective on the case. Oh, shit. Brandes, who had been previously acquitted of the 78 attempted murder of two police officers in the United States, flew to Melbourne, but was immediately deported. As soon as the guy is like... Oh, they're like, no, dude, you've already got violent crime on you. you Right. Right. I mean, to avoid all that, these countries should be like, nah, you're on a list. Oh, well, most of them do. You get most of them. I'm saying, if you're in the United States, you're like you're going to Australia. Uh, well, you're on a list, but I don't know. they don't know that. They should. You don't need to do that on your way out. It's just the country you're at entering. Everybody has a violent crime offender. Like you're not even allowed in Japan or anything if you've been convicted of even a drug charge. Nineteen uh, nineties. Terrence Raymond uh, Tognol- Tognolini. They call him Terry. He's the president and enforcer of the Angels Nomads. President and enforcer. Okay, got to right. double duty. Damn, he was involved in an apparent road rage incident with motorist Mustafa Yildirim in Campbellfield, which was in Melbourne on the twenty second of December, nineteen ninety five. Tagnolini followed Yildrum to his workplace. The men traded blows until they were separated. Before Tagnolini retrieved a gun from his car and he fired several shots at Wildrum, all of which missed. Well, you're a pretty what? shitty enforcer there, guy. Right. Holy shit, man. <laughs> Police raided Tagnolini's home and found five cannabis plants in the backyard. He was charged with unlawful assault, assault with a weapon, making threats to kill, possessing cannabis, cultivating a narcotic, narcotic plant. Uh, the case against him collapsed, though, when a Wilderum refused to testify after being repeatedly harassed, even about the pot. He's like, did he try to shoot at you? No, we can't get in front of pot charges. Yeah, man. All right. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Tognolini was later implicated in the murder of Vicki Joy Jacobs, who was a 37-year-old woman who was shot six times as she slept next to her six-year-old son in her apartment in Long Gully, Bendigo, on June 12, 1999. Dang. The previous year, Jacobs had given evidence that helped convict her ex-husband, Gerald David Preston, for the August 96 murders of a drug dealer and mechanic, Les Knowles, and his employee, Tim Richards, in Adelaide. And her testimony implicated the Hells Angels in hiring Preston for the killing. Uh-oh. The prosecution heard that Tognolini had uh, contracted Preston to murder Knowles, who was trying to expand into the Hells Angels drug territory, and also sold him a Luger pistol that he uh, he used in the murders. Oh, look at that shit. Why is your president doing this stuff, guys? I know, so stupid. Jeez. Well, the Victoria Police bulldozed their way into the fortified oh, Thomastown <laughs> headquarters of the Nomads chapter in July of 1999 as part of the investigation, seizing a sawn-off shotgun, bulletproof vests, bags of documents, what kind of documents, and three motorcycles. So nothing, really. Tognolini, he was overseas, Preston in prison at the time of Jacob's murder, and no one has been charged with this crime. However, a coronial inquest in 2004 declared that the Popo believed she was murdered on the orders of the angels as a payment for Preston remaining silent 
over the club's involvement in the Adelaide murders. Hmm. I don't know about that. Maybe. So her ex-husband and probably the father of their kid. Right. And he was like, I'll stay silent, but you can murder her. Don't worry. Wow. It's pretty fucked up. I guess he was probably going to get murdered if not, huh? All right. And moving on to the 2000s, June 2004, Victoria police arrested Stephen Rogers, the president of the Melbourne chapter of the Hells Angels, on charges of tra- trafficking in amphetamine. Oh. The Victoria police seized assets worth three million Australian dollars, including six houses, cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Damn. In 2004, the Hells Angels and the Rebels were involved in a brawl at the Dance Music Awards at the Adelaide Football Stadium that ended with bikes. That ended with the bikies first using the chairs and their fists as weapons, followed up by guns. Uh oh. The guests at the Dance Music Awards fled in terror as shots were fired. I bet they did. Sons of bitches. Uh, Angels members. Raymond Joseph Hammett Jr., they call him Ray, and Paul Peterson, and club associate Andrew Hinton, each pled guilty to charges of conduct and danger in life, intentionally causing serious injury, false imprisonment, and rioting after abducting Brendan uh, Shiavela from outside a bar and holding him captive for five hours in Ivanhoe, Melbourne. They did that on the 25th of June in 2005. Uh, Shiavella was found with a toe amputated, but told the Popo he could not recall how it happened. Oh, well, I think I, I think it's always been like that. Okay. It's been bleeding That's for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no motive has been established for the incident either. Oh, geez. He knew to keep his mouth shut. All right. Well, January 2007, we're back to Tagnalini. He was expelled from the Hells Angels, had his tattoos removed, and was savagely beaten and dumped on the street outside Thomastown. Uh, the clubhouse after his fellow members learned that he was on the that he was the subject of child sex allegations. Oh no! The mobster show, the the mafia episode last time there was Roy DeMeo was participating Jeez. in child porn. Yeah, what the freak's going on with these idiots? Well, police arrested him on blackmail and arson charges, and for a series of sex offenses six months later, he was found guilty of eighteen counts of supplying a drug of dependence to a child. Oh shit! One count of an indecent act with a child under oh, sixteen. Oh, that dude needs to be moited. And one count of attempting to pervert the course of justice and imprisoned for six and a half years in two thousand nine, and was further convicted of nine counts of blackmail, three of arson, two of intentionally causing injury and stalking, and had eighteen months added to his sentence in two thousand ten. Oh, That's it. Just eighteen months. Jeez. Many of Tognolini's crimes were part of the extortion racket he ran, using his former Hell's Angels connections as well as threats and assaults to intimidate his victims. Nobody killed this guy. All right. The Holy fuck. Holy shit. 18th of June, 2007, Hells Angels member Christopher Wayne Hudson opened fire on two men and a woman during an argument in the central business district of Melbourne. After assaulting his girlfriend, Kara Douglas, two male bystanders, Brendan Kyler and Paul DeWard, attempted to assist Douglas. Hudson pulled a gun and shot all three, killing Kyler on the corner of uh, William, William Street and Flinders Lane. Hudson fled from the scene, went into hiding for two days before turning himself into the Popo on the 20th of June, 2007. He did that in Wallen, north of Melbourne. 2008 in May, Hudson, guilty to the murder of Brendan Kyler, and was sentenced uh, that September to, and he was sentenced that September to life in prison with a minimum of 35 years before becoming eligible for parole. All right, good for you. He dragged her out on the street by her hair, her girlfriend. Attempted to assist Hudson Paul Gunn, who was fatally wounded in the head, Kyler was. Douglas later had a kidney removed as a result of injuries. Mm-hmm. So he's all drugged out. Yeah. And just two days before uh, that happened, he fired at police in Campbellfield at uh, a night of car driving with Jeez. Collinwood footballer Alan Didek. Jeez. He's in prison for life, so. All right. Moving on to 2010s, Hells Angels member Glenn David Dickman right. was found guilty of intentionally causing serious injury <laughs> and threatened to kill and acquitted of theft while club hangaround Ali Chowick was found guilty of recklessly causing serious injury, threat to kill, and false imprisonment October 2014 after the pair beat 18 year old German tourist Faiso Akbari. Does it sound German? Right. Uh, with a baseball bat at the Hells Angels Clubhouse in Thomastown in September 2009. Oh, shit. When he falsely claimed to be a club member. Okay. Akbari's injuries included bleeding between the skull and lining of the brain, oh. a broken leg, and lacerations to a scalp and face. Oh. Well, how about this? Don't go around in a notorious uh, motorcycle gang and claim that you're a part of them. Right. Idiot. 
Okay, uh, Peter John Hewat, they call him Schizo. He was sergeant at arms of the Hells Angels East County Chapter in Campbellfield, which is in Melbourne. He was arrested in March of 2013 after striking a 64-year-old woman during a dispute over his dog. And he was again arrested in October as part of a statewide raid targeting the Angels in which 13 people arrested weapons and drugs were seized. Hewat was sentenced to 10 months in jail in January 2014 after he pled guilty to assault, weapons offenses, handling stolen goods, and operating a tow truck without the proper license. <laughs> All right. That's it. They got him on that one. That was the most serious right. events. <laughs> now, the Banditos uh, reportedly declared war on the Hells Angels after an ambush on several Banditos members outside the affiliated Diablos Clubhouse in Melton, Melbourne on the 1st of March 2013 in which over 30 shots were fired, and two men, including Bandino's National Sergeant-at-Arms Toby Mitchell, were wounded. Whoa. The Hells Angels Nomad chapter were blamed for the attack, and brothers Daniel and Ben Pegararo, both Pegararo. members of the Hells Angels Puppet Club, the Red Devils, were questioned by the police. Uh-oh. Within a week of the shooting, a clubhouse in Bendigo, linked to the Hells Angels, was burned down, and the Pagaro brothers' home in Epping, Melbourne, was attacked in a drive-by shooting. Uh-oh. Although prolonged violence was expected, the feud seemingly ended after senior members of the two club held a uh, peace talk. Oh, you know, that shit's going to happen. All right. We'll, oh, we'll have time for this, man. All right. Ray Hammett Jr., president of Hells Angels Nomad, pled guilty to a charge of recklessly causing serious injury. Jailed three months after attacking a man who approached him in a McDonald's in Thomastown on the 7th of June in 2013. Angels carried out drive-by shootings using either AK-47s or M1 carbines and attempted bombings on two properties, a tattoo parlor in Dandenong, Dandenong and a gym in Halam, owned by Comanchero's uh, state president, Michael Murray. They call him Mick. Hey, yo, Mick. In the early hours of September 30th, 2013, after several angels were assaulted while trying to recover stolen motorcycles from the rival club. Oh, jeez. Within hours of the attacks, the clubhouse of the Hells Angels Dark Side chapter in Seaford, Melbourne, was shot at in an apparent retaliation. Uh-oh. October 13th, 2013, Victoria Police raided every Hells Angels property in the state. Oh, shit. In an attempt to curb bikey-related violence, seizing guns, ammo, drugs, and cash, and arresting 13 people. But failed to retrieve the assault rifles used in these shootings. Damn. Of course, why would you? Well, they may be stupid, but they're finally, not dumb. Finally, the first time these guys did something smart was not bring the shit back. Right. Oh, Dennis Basic. Not a basic Dennis. Right. He was a, pr a prospective member of the Dark Side chapter. He was arrested for attempted bombings, properties, and pled guilty to 13 charges, which also included firearm and drug possession. Having been held in custody since his arrest until the time of his sentencing in December 2015. The judge ruled that the time he had served in jail, it was enough, but ordered he served an additional 12-month community corrections order. What the hell are these judges doing? The president of the Hells Angels Dark Side chapter, Mohammed Sam Coder, was jailed for seven and a half years for selling more than $220,000 worth of amphetamines oh. to undercover police officers in January 2015. Oh, you Again, dummy. why the fuck are your presidents doing this? It's fucking stupid. He had been targeted during an investigation codenamed Operation Staten. Uh, part of a major crackdown on motorcycle gangs by Victoria Police. He sold 910 grams of the drug to officers in 11 separate transactions oh. between October 2013 and February 2014. Damn. He also sold a Browning semi-automatic pistol with ammunition to the officers for $10,500. Oh, my. Well, that was, uh, like I said, not as long as the other ones. But, I mean, actually not even as violent as I, uh, I mean, just was expecting, to be honest. Regular stuff, pretty much. Well, next week, though, we'll have uh, move on to Canada, or UK, one of them. Canada's got a pretty decent one. UK's got a pretty decent one. Canada, United Kingdom. United Kingdom's actually... Canada and the United Kingdom are pretty long. And then we'll move to the rest of the world, which includes places like uh, Austria and stuff like that. Germany, stuff like that. And then we'll move on to end it out with... Second most famous member of this group behind uh, old Sonny Barger himself, George Christie Jr., who, ooh, <laughs> if you look on YouTube right now, the dude's been on 100 shows. I believe he's even got a podcast now himself. Yeah, so, sure. I mean, all this shit's been at least the California stuff because that's where he was. But, um, 
Yeah, so we got a few more months of Hells Angels coming around the corner. Next week, we'll be back for some more remastered, which is going to be, I believe, Billy the Kid? Oh, that's who it is. A little fucker himself, huh? John Wesley. Uh, next week, we'll be moving on to our remastered edition of John Wesley Harden. This possibly, guy's a prick. Possibly one of the fastest gunslingers ever to exist. What? Nobody liked Jesse James. No, nah, man. Nobody cared about Jesse James, dude. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, John Wesley Harden next week. I mean, yeah, next week. This guy's a fucker. <laughs> a little fucker. He was a little fucker. Shot a man while he was snoring. Um, and then uh, we'll finish it up. Finish up the month with another serial killer episode. I'm thinking we go big, 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 big here. Maybe John, maybe a John Wayne Gacy or something here. Big, 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 big. Finally get into some popular ones. So. Got a couple of nice weeks ahead of us here on Outlaws and Gunslingers. Go subscribe to our YouTube where you'll get this show plus our other show, Battles of the American Civil War, where we look at Civil War battles. And we're almost done with that war. But have no fear because we'll be profiling all the stupid generals. Generals and major figures of said war coming up after we're done with that. So, yeah. YouTube, where you can find it all in one place, or you can find both shows on Spotify, Apple. Give us a subscription, share us with your friends, and we'll be back next week for old John Wesley Harden here on Outlaws and Gunslingers. We are the Mother Michiganders. We you. Ding, ding. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on new episodes of Outlaws and Gunslingers or Battles of the American Civil War right here on the Bang Dang Network. And don't forget to check out those playlists 